Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. So in the uh, first video of the series, I said that I wanted to build um, the Kenneth Wells stationary engine and, the, and where to get the uh, plans and a wonderful playlist that Emma has created that uh, I can follow along. So as I had mentioned, the plans are, uh, they're all in metric, right? Except that uh, I don't really have any um, metric tooling. I got a couple of, uh, of cheap um, metric rulers so I can you know mostly gauge the, the length and the width of these parts and that sort of thing. Um, except for the holes, um, you know they're all expressed in metric and um, uh, Kenneth Wells, you know he it puts in parentheses of uh, you know um, um, an imperial size that you can use. So what I've done for the first one, we're going to start with the base. That seems the most logical place, and it's uh, uh, something that I have the material for. Uh, re uh, requests, uh, uh, calls out 20 gauge uh, bright mild steel sheet, which I do have, and I have cut a piece uh, to size. The only other thing I've done is I went through, uh, just for a sanity check of myself, using the height gauge or calipers or whatever, uh, I've converted the metric uh, millimeter units to inch uh, and circled them and wrote them out here for myself. So anyway, this is what I'm following. Uh, if, you know, if you want to do this project, you can get these plans. I uh, put a link in the in uh, the first video. I'll look in the description down there, and because uh, I can't remember the name of the the message form, it's something about model engine machinist something. I don't know. It's kind of long, so. All right, so anyway, let me uh, let me get the camera down uh, closer to my workbench and let's uh, talk about uh, how I'm going to do this. Okay, so the plan calls for um, 20 gauge sheet metal. I have a piece here. Uh, the, the arrow just indicates that's my straightest side, and then the little square off over here on the edge. This is this is my right angle edge. So all my measurements will either come off the bottom or come off the side. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, my uh, metric rule here and, and a sharpie and draw some lines on here with some ink so that when I go to the when I go to the uh, surface uh, uh, gauge to uh, I mean the uh, you know my height gauge uh, to mark them out then uh, clearly be able to see the lines. So let me do that and then uh, I'll bring you right back. Okay, so I've put some um, Sharpie marks where I think the uh, uh, lines are going to be scribed right around that area so that uh, I have a nice contrast with my scriber. Uh, so my, my height gauge here is imperial, so I've converted, that's why I converted all the metric stuff over to, uh, um, to inch so that I can scribe them at the right height and whatnot. And I tell you what, you know, I've never made a, uh, this kind of video, so I don't know if I'm nervous or what or, or what. But anyway, so I want to set this up against my little angle plate. And I'm, I'm going to mark this. Fold line here. Okay, so that one's marked, and uh, the next one up is um, at 25 millimeters, so that's 984 thousandths, so let me unlock this here, and come down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's 990. And we need to be at 984. Oops. Went too far. All right, so at 984. And we'll mark the places for these holes. And hopefully, I got everything here in. Alright, so I'm going to continue on like that, and uh, when I get them all marked, I'll bring you back in. Okay, I have uh, all my lines marked. I don't know if you, can, I don't know if they show up or not, um, but I have uh, the six uh, holes marked to be drilled, and I have my fold lines, all three of those, uh, set up. 
So what I'm going to do next is uh, very carefully and very lightly center punch these six uh, marks. And uh, I think when I, I got a little small spring-loaded center punch, I think do that with. And I'll put on my geezer goggle so I can actually see what I'm uh, uh, punching. And then I'm um, going to take them over to the drill press and drill them. So uh, when I get uh, over to the drill press, I'll bring you back in. So. Okay, so I have a number one center drill here. I'm just going to bump these uh, little um, center punches that I made. Hopefully I don't get my arm in the way. I'm liable to. I just want to give something for the uh, bit to follow. And I'm not so sure about the camera angles yet. I'm still working on that. Alright, so that's two. Alright, that's three. I'm going to do the other three and I'll change bits and I'll uh, bring you right back in. Okay, well the plan called for three and a half millimeter holes to be drilled through here, which I think, although I'm not real sure, I think is clearance for a three uh, millimeter screw or a 5BA. Well, I'm, I plan on using uh, 540 uh, UNF screws, so I'm going to drill it to 964. I'm not worried about it getting away from me. I was trying to give a decent camera view there. Okay. And I understand drilling sheet metal is hazardous and I probably should have this in a vise. And I was going to, uh, but my little drill press vise won't open up wide enough to hold it. So I'm just trying to be extra careful. Okay, um, hopefully you can see that. So the holes are drilled. I still have to countersink them. Uh, so let me find the countersink bit and uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, so I found uh, my countersink bit. I think this has got five flutes on it, so it chatters easy, but this is pretty thin stuff. So I've uh, taken the liberty to mark the four holes um, on the uh, back of the plate that need to be countersunk. I'm just gonna very gently um, countersink these. I think it's just to hold a, the, you know, for a tapered head of a flathead screw. So let's see how we do here. I'm not interested in making the hole larger, just chamfering the outside. And there's a little bit of chatter, but I think. I think that's going to be okay. So let me check. Let me get these and I probably need to slow the drill down, but I don't feel like changing the belts. Okay, 
those are chamfered. So uh, the next thing to do is I need to make my bends and let me get over by the set you up over by the vise and and I'll do that. Hey, I want to apologize for this camera angle. I don't think this is a very good one. I'm still trying to work this out. I haven't actually uh, really videoed any work in my shop yet. So um, I guess you're just in for, you know, some bad camera stuff. <laughs> All right. So anyway, let me uh, let me get over to the uh, bench and, and uh, we'll get set up over there and I'll bring you back in. Okay. So I'm back over here at the bench with my bench vise. Now I don't have... Um, uh, I don't have a, a, a sheet metal bender, you know, I don't have a break. So, uh, but I did cut a couple of uh, pieces of quarter by one uh, cold rolled steel that I'm going to try to use as, uh, as uh, bending bars. So, um, I'm going to start with uh, the small bend. And I think, you know, hindsight being 2020, you know, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it would have been a little better when I put my bars together if I would have um, <clears throat> if I would have uh, maybe put a couple of screws so uh, what do you think about that should I uh, you know flush these up uh, put a couple of uh, uh, little bolts in here so that I can sort of snug it onto the piece of metal and then get it in there and I know that my top is nice and flush and that sort of thing all right, so anyway, here's my first bend line. It's the six millimeter bend line. Oh, you know what? I jumped the gun. I can't bend that until I cut these corners out. So I think, uh, I think that's what I'm gonna do next. Uh, sorry about that. And, and uh, let me get a little hacksaw and some file work. I'm just gonna uh, just cut the corners out here so that uh, the six millimeter bend and the 12 millimeter bends don't interfere. So. I'll bring you back here in a little bit okay well that uh, didn't take too long got the corners uh, I cut close to the line with the hacksaw when I say close I mean like hand grenades and horseshoes and I don't know thermal nuclear devices right so, so I had to file a little more than I wanted to but anyway they're filed down the lines and now I think I'm finally ready to make these bends so like I said um, I don't have a, a sheet metal break, but I did uh, make a couple bars and talked about those a while ago. So, get these closed here. Alright, All right, now I'm just going to tap this down until I'm on my full fold line okay it looks like it there so, tighten up my vise here and let's bend this over see what uh, see what happens here Just want a good crease in there. We have some hammer marks. I probably should put a piece of metal back there. I think on the other stuff I'm, I might do that um, just to protect the uh, surface a little bit. All right, so there's the first bend. I might have to tweak it just a little bit to make sure it's 90 degrees. All right, so I'm gonna do the other two bends uh, off camera and I will uh, bring you in when I'm done with those two folds. So I'll see you here in a little bit. Okay, well, I have the, uh, I have the folds made. And it's a little dented, you know, where I beat on it. I, I need to uh, work on that, but at least it's on the bottom and most of the stuff is covered up. Uh, I got a little, a little rock in it, you know, so I, I want to tweak on it a little bit. I'll do that off camera. And then I'm probably just going to take a file here and, and kind of tweak and knock off this sharp little corners right here. But other than that, you know, um, that piece is uh, done, like I said, except for cleaning it up and, 
and uh, and and straightening a little bit and 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 painting it. So uh, what do you know? I'm um, I'm one part down, and uh, I'm on my way to making this uh, little uh, engine. So hey, um, I've never done like a little project like this. I've, I've filmed at my lathe before when I made things, you know, I was in my basement and I can actually get the camera behind it. Things are a little different now. So um, if you guys have uh, uh, some suggestions for better camera angles and stuff like that, uh, that'd be great. Um, anything to, you know, better present to you. I know I'm uh, kind of nervous. I don't even know why. But uh, anyway, so uh, this is the first part made. Uh, there's a bunch more parts made. I still got to get... Uh, pieces and, and stuff. Uh, I did uh, manage to salvage a piece of um, copper tubing. You can see that I unsoldered it from a from a union. Uh, so that's that's the right size and, and everything. And uh, I don't have any copper sheet, but I think what I'll do is uh, when I cut the boiler uh, to length or a little bit more, um, I think what I'll do is uh, you know maybe split split the remaining piece and uh, anneal it and flatten it out or, or something like that or see if I I may have another small piece of uh, inch and a half uh, available so uh, this is not quite 42 millimeters I think it comes in um, about a about a quarter of a millimeter or so shy you know so but I think it'd be okay I'll just adjust the holes and the end plates um, to fit so I can almost imagine a little boiler sitting there and and uh, it's coming right along so Emma thanks again uh, for putting out the series um, I think that uh, I think that uh, with with your know-how and and me fumbling along I might actually be able to get this done so you know how it is so anyway uh, thanks for follow, uh, hanging out with me uh, folks uh, why while, while I'm uh, working on this uh, uh, stationary uh, steam engine and uh, if uh, you've enjoyed uh, the series or you enjoy my videos, please consider like, subscribing, and sharing, uh, or maybe give me a thumbs up. So I'm going to leave it here, and other than that, have a blessed day.